Good evening, I'm Tom Hawkins. Over the next several slides, I'm gonna show you a couple different puzzles. And those of you watching this on video can pause and try to solve the puzzle, but those of you here watching this live, unfortunately, are thrust forward into the future. <laughs> this is the first puzzle. Draw four straight contiguous lines that cross through all lines. Contiguous means that the lines connect end to end, as if without lifting up the pencil. So I'll give you a moment to solve. I hope you're quick. There's the solution. Now, a lot of people get tripped up by that because of the concept of puzzle space. They get bound in by the border of the dots. So when they're solving this, they have trouble figuring out that the solution involves going beyond the box. And in fact, this is the origin of the phrase, think outside the box. And I do this puzzle a lot with the interns at work. And I give them these puzzles and then I ask them questions about how they solve them. <laughs> because I'm interested in how people think and how they solve the problems and how they unearth these assumptions. And when they, when they work on this puzzle, they tell me, oh, I couldn't figure it out, but then I realized I could go outside the box. Then I realized. So there's, there's a moment of insight in solving this puzzle that they figure out. And there's something going on in the brain where there's some, some lower order processes going on and then they bridge up to some higher order processes and then we realize this assumption. But how can we make this useful for planning? Because whenever we plan, we're always going to have these assumptions that we're trying to identify. And we need to identify them because our plans are, are necessary, they're necessary to identify the path forward in our plans. And an example of this is if somebody asks you for a better door, you're gonna start with a slab of material with a handle on it, but what if what they really wanted was a better way to get through a wall? So you have to examine the statement that's made. And there's a few, well, we're gonna try another puzzle here. Uh, this time we're gonna do three straight contiguous lines that cross through all nine dots. And again, those at home can pause this, the rest of you, forward into the future. And there's the solution. Now the assumption people make here is that these dots are zero dimensional. They don't have any width or height, but in fact, they do. And so you can draw three lines through the nine dots. And so we try to think about how could we have come up with a solution to this. One way is to leave the puzzle space. Just draw lines. What would what four contiguous lines look like? Forget about the dots. Just concentrate on those lines and try drawing the lines. What shapes do they make? Where can you go with them? Look at the problem statement. Examine the words. What do they mean? What do we mean when we say draw, dots, cross, line, straights? What do each of these terms mean in the context of the problem statement? And finally, look at changes of states. When you're drawing a line and you stop and you start to draw another line, why did you make that change? Why did you decide to turn? And you look at those points and you examine them and you ask yourself questions about them. And when you have these assumptions, there's two things you want to do. You want to look for vulnerabilities and you want to determine whether they're load bearing. A vulnerable assumption is one that could fail. And you want to know whether your assumption could fail because you might have to take further action. Load bearing means that if the assumption fails, then you need to make some changes to your plan. Because if you don't need to make changes to the plan, then you don't really need to examine that assumption further. So with these vulnerable load bearing assumptions, you make shaping actions which shore up your assumptions. They, they ensure that those assumptions will occur, they will be valid. So you're taking action on them. Conversely, a hedging action is something you do in case, the action, in case it fails, it's a contingency plan, like buying insurance for something. So there you have shaping and hedging actions. Lots of hedging actions. Finally, <laughs> finally we have one last puzzle to solve. Here we're drawing one straight line that crosses through all nine dots. You get a moment to solve, quickly, quickly, and there it is. We never said how thick the line could be. <laughs> Thank you and good night.